Now, one of the problems with the standard model of the Grand Canyon's formation is that the Colorado River, even before the Glen Canyon Dam stemmed its awesome desert floods, was never really big enough to explain the size of the canyon. And then you run into another major problem. Well, literally. The Colorado flows out of the Rockies to the west and runs smack into a raised plateau called the Kaibab Upwarp. That isn't the worst of it, though. The headwaters of the Colorado are at a lower elevation than the Kaibab is. But in my neck of the woods, water doesn't run uphill. And if it encountered an obstacle like a plateau, it goes around. The Colorado River, on the other hand, just goes right through. Experts offer that the river slowly cut its way in as the land rose around. Trouble is, the plateau was there a long time before the river was. Now let's talk about the 5.4 trillion cubic yards of missing material that was supposedly excavated from the canyon by the Colorado River. This missing material left little evidence in support of the original theory that a simple progression of water erosion formed the Grand Canyon we see today. Now that much we can agree on. And since the 1930s and 40s, geologists have been searching for a more reasonable explanation. One proposes the river changed direction, headed to the southeast, while another claims it must have flowed northeast instead. Trouble with both is that, once again, there's no river drainage to back them up. Another theorizes that the waters of the Colorado collected behind the Kaibab up War Plateau until it overflowed and cut the canyon out with the resulting floodwaters. But again... The headwaters of the Colorado are at a lower elevation than the upwarp, and I'm pretty sure that isn't how water works. One of the newer theories proposes the collapse of the Redwall Aquifer after water eroded the karst and maybe some tectonic movement to set it off. They theorize this happened back when the Rocky Mountains were newly formed. It's a decent argument, and sinkholes that form from water eating away the karst are common enough. Trouble is, the world's largest sinkhole is the Shaoshai Tiongqing in China. It can hold about 120 million cubic meters, and that's good size. The Grand Canyon can hold about 4.7 trillion cubic meters. Like so many theories we settle on, though, there's no real way to test this out. We've got no other confirmed examples to show they can reach these sizes. So now I hope you'll entertain what I think is a more modern solution to the question of how the Grand Canyon was formed. This time we're not only using earthly evidence, but also data returned by space probes and produced by more than a century of experimental and theoretical work in plasma laboratories. To start with, consider that the Grand Canyon is often compared to the gigantic scar across Mars' surface, Vallis Marineris, 